I'm Brandon and this is my review of the Reebok Float Ride Run version 2. I bought the original Float Ride Run two years ago and I was not impressed. The midsole was light and responsive but the upper had a sloppy fit. I experienced heel slip and the midfoot cage was hard and intrusive. The shoe felt like a prototype that should never have seen the light of day. I was keen to see if Reebok had fixed all the shortcomings of the Float Ride 1, and they did not disappoint. Like a fine red wine, the Reebok Float Ride Run has matured into a reliable and comfortable trainer that is capable of any type of run you could throw at it. The Float Ride Run 2's upper is the perfect balance of casual meets performance. It blends a soft knitted upper with functional elements like a midfoot cage and a molded heel counter for stability. Reebok calls its knit Ultra Knit and it's super stretchy and soft. Like all other Reebok running shoes, it runs big, so I went a half size down to get a good foot lockdown. There is plenty of forefoot room for feet to splay. The midfoot TPU cage has been updated to be softer and thinner. The molded heel cup has also been improved. I experienced slight heel slippage, but when I used heel lock lacing, I was able to eliminate the heel slip. The updated midsole packs more float ride foam goodness into it than ever before. In the float ride run 2, you get to feel the full float ride foam experience. The entire midsole is made from it with no EVA additions. The previous version had an EVA rim around the entire midsole which contained the foam and made the ride much firmer. PBAX foam is an amazing product. It's light, responsive, cushioned and durable. It's also more temperature resistant than any other foam on the market. The versatility of the foam transfers over to the Float Ride Run 2 as a running shoe. It's light and responsive enough for tempo runs but also has deep cushioning for long distances where your legs need protection. Reebok makes my favorite insoles. They have a smooth lining on the top that doesn't gather pieces of sock and the underside has thick padded pillars that add an extra layer of cushioning to the shoe. They don't flatten much over the lifespan of the shoe and they also don't slip around. The thin layer of midsole in the forefoot paired with the soft foam makes the shoe very flexible. When the shoe bends, it snaps quickly back to its original position. The outsole rubber used in this updated version is harder and more durable than the previous version. The lugs are also more aggressive. There are more of them and they stick out so they bite into the tar. Grip is great on dry surfaces, but the outsole is really slippery on wet pavement. The green paint on the outsole starts to peel off after a couple of runs, but apart from the paint, the outsole rubber is incredibly durable, and the outsole looks almost untouched after 50 miles of usage. One thing that I still miss is the addition of a beveled heel. As a heel striker, I found my heel catching the ground slightly upon landings. Like the nerdy girl in high school who gets a makeover and suddenly becomes popular, Reebok has taken off the glasses and revealed a magnificent running shoe. The Reebok Float Ride Run 2 is a comfortable, cushioned daily trainer with no major weaknesses. It's well capable of short tempo runs and has the capability of long distance runs above 25 kilometers. I didn't take the previous version seriously as a performance running shoe, but the Reebok Float Ride Run 2 has grown up and matured into one of the best daily trainers on the market. Thanks for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel.